Welcome to another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias, Almost Live. This episode was recorded in front of a live studio audience. Well, it was recorded in front of a live cat. Any case, hope you enjoy the show. Yep, it's time for another Almost Live. But before we begin the show, I thought I'd talk a little bit about an image you've probably been seeing at the beginning and ending of some of the uh, episodes we've been shooting here. And that's of this sticker that's going to be available pretty soon. And the black and green sticker with Kitty on it. Now, as you may know in the past, basically, I would just say, hey, you want a sticker? Email me and I'll, I'll give you the details. And then basically, I would just send you a sticker. That's not going to be the case with these stickers because Kitty said, you got to start making some money if you're ever going to keep this, uh, this channel up and running. So the best way to do that is sell me, sell a picture of me. And so that's uh, what uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to take her advice. And uh, so what we've done is we have created a new sticker. And these stickers are going to be about two inches by three inches long. It's going to feature Kitty in all of her glory. Kitty, the odd-eyed cat with one yellow eye and one blue eye and all that white fur and uh, on that wonderful black background. And they are going to be available in three different ways. Number one is in giveaways. You'll get a Kitty sticker in the giveaway. That is, if you win a giveaway. Kitty says, I'm allowed to swap this sticker for other stickers. But otherwise, uh, Kitty is going to settle on a price that she wants to sell her photo for. Uh, I don't know what that is yet, but uh, we'll be letting you know a little bit more about that in the upcoming future. Right now, the stickers are not even available yet, but uh, we hope to have them within the next four to six weeks. And then uh, we'll give you a little bit more information on how you can get a Knife Chat with Tobias brought to you by the Cat Production Team featuring Kitty. All right, on with the show. Well, it's been a long winter, no doubt about it, and uh, and uh, you can and it definitely affected me this year, uh, really bad. Um, I guess I get that uh, SAD, that seasonal affective disorder, and uh, well, you can probably tell that from my uh, my my video on uh, five gripes about uh, knives these days. Uh, any case, uh, hopefully that's all behind us now. And we've had the time change. We've got a little more sunlight to, to play in um, at the end of the day and everything. And hopefully that's going to make everyone just feel a little bit happier. And hopefully the um, this uh, two-week shutdown that we've been doing for the last year is, uh, is about over. So hopefully we'll uh, be getting a little bit more back to normal. That's what I'm praying for. Um, in any case, um, one of the things that really perked me up is I got this uh, box of joy. It was actually a bigger box of joy than what you see here, but I put all the contents in a smaller box so I would have an overflowing box of joy because then it would seem like even more joy. And uh, this came from um, one of my viewers, um, Gizmo Carr, and I really need to thank him for... Uh, for sending this to me. It could not have come at a better time. I have uh, been really struggling um, with, um, in general, with, uh, it seems like it happens every time in the winter too. It just, you know, you, it seems like nothing seems to be going right when you're doing all this stuff. But uh, when you get something like this, it definitely is a uh, something, it's like a shot in the arm to really boost you and get you over the, uh, the top um, and and get you back to normal a little bit and so well let's take a look at this uh, wonderful box of joy that uh, Gizmo Carr sent me um, he bought a bunch of stuff from Smoky Mountain Knife Works and sent it my way and I am really really grateful um, some of the stuff in the box I would have probably never bought which is cool uh, some of the stuff uh, in the box are things I had thought about picking up but just haven't gotten around to yet so that is also cool. Um, we already see right here, we got these uh, little aluminum whistles, uh, UST whistles. 
anyone who's followed the channel knows uh, I like whistles and he sent me two and so what I'm planning on doing is one will uh, uh, stick around here and the other one will probably go into a um, a future giveaway and I've talked to Gizmo he's okay with that um, matter of fact he said if I wasn't happy with the stuff in the box I could just send it all back to SMKW and buy what I wanted to buy um, I thought that would have been pretty tacky uh, but it was nice of him to let me know I could do that uh, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep what I really really want and then I'm going to pass the other stuff on to other folks uh, in the uh, in, um, on my channel. Uh, so in either way, uh, I have to thank Gizmo because he has uh, uh, really perked me up and uh, also given me a couple really cool things and also uh, has supported the channel in a really terrific way. So uh, thank you very much, Gizmo. But let's move on beyond the whistles. Um, this is a, a nice little box and you'll see there's a knife in there. And it's a small knife, a little wee knife, and it's a Rough Rider knife and some interesting packaging. Um, and he got it because he knows I like turquoise. And uh, we see here a little turquoise folder, a little key uh, keychain knife. And it's not a lockback, though it looks like a lockback. But look at that wee little knife. And it's a nice little folder. Got a bit of a half stop going on, Rough Rider, and you see with the Y, uh, I'm not sure if this is turquoise or malachite, uh, I believe they said it was turquoise, and you got a little piece of uh, wood there too, so very interesting little design of a knife, and you never know when you could use a little knife, and uh, so that's pretty cool. A lot of packaging for such a little knife, but uh, not a bad little uh, folder. Got a decent snap to it, too. And a pretty good lockup. So I like that one. And this one I will definitely be keeping. I'm going to throw it in with my uh, uh, Stoneworks collection, even though it isn't really quite a Stoneworks knife. So that one's pretty cool. I'm going to set that over there. I'm not going to have room to keep all this stuff up here. The other thing he sent me was he actually sent me two of these. This is the, uh, I, no, this isn't it. Where is it at? Where is that at? Yeah, it is. Uh, the uh, 1092s, the RR 1092s. And these are um, little um, uh, blade picks or a little chisel. You can use it for uh, scraping or whatever. But it's really designed to help you open up um, uh, a knife blade and such. And it's got a nice little tobacco smooth bone handle. And like I said, he sent me two of these also. Uh, which means uh, one of them will be going out to uh, people in giveaways. And I will be keeping one in the collection. So, uh, and it's uh, the ones with the uh, bow tie shield. Can we see it there? Rough Rider. And Rough Rider Signature. I've always looked at getting one of these, but I just never bothered to do it. I do have other knife picks. Uh, hold on just a second. Here's uh, my uh, Queen Cutlery Company knife pick uh, out of Titusville, Pennsylvania. As you see, they're never very big. And uh, another one I got, though, is really more of a church key, uh, but you can use it as a knife pick, is one that I got from uh, SMKW. And... Uh, Knives Live TV, and you can actually use this in here for your knife pick portion. But obviously, it is also a a uh, cap lifter or bottle opener, and then a can piercer on the other side. So I have other ones. Uh, so it's um, it's not like I collect them or anything, but they're a pretty cool thing to have, and they uh, actually do work quite well when you're uh, having an issue getting to a blade or something. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do this on camera or not, but basically what you do is you put the the little uh, blade into the nail nick and you reach across and grab the other side of the blade and you can pull it out. So this is basically acting as your uh, as your thumb. So instead of you know grabbing it like so and pulling up, 
you're basically grabbing it like so and trying to lift it up. So it's saving you your thumbnail, uh, especially when you're dealing with a really tight um, um, uh, pull on your knife. Uh, this will very much come in handy when dealing with these things. These are the old uh, Swiss Army knives. I, I will do a video on these later. But these have the strongest pull you can ever imagine on these um, on the can opener. But with a nail nick, it's pretty easy to get it out. You almost need a screwdriver to pull them out. So I've got one now, you know, with a little uh, assisted tool right here. Any case, um, enough on uh, the uh, little uh, nail nick pullers. Let's move on to what else is in the box. I got one of those uh, leather sheaths, the genuine leather slips or knife slips. Um, I'm concerned about these. I will have to check it out though and see how it works or not. I've heard some people complain about the stitching already. What I'm worried about, well, let's go ahead and get this opened. Almost live, folks. Remember, it's almost live. Um, everyone has told me they're pretty stiff and you're going to have to break them in. I don't think it's that stiff. Uh, definitely will need to be oiled a little bit. Uh, I also know that several people have dyed them and stuff. But this is what I'm concerned about more than anything. And that is the crud that, that is around this ring here. Um, I'm going to have to try and clean that up. And what I might end up doing is actually popping that rivet out. And I, I've got a riveting set, so I might just go ahead and put in a different uh, ring there. Because uh, I, I don't know. I don't trust it. But I'm going to definitely clean it out. Uh, these are, as far as I know, where were they? Uh, they are made in Pakistan. And uh, I've already told you how much I'm not too crazy about sheaths out of Pakistan. But... It doesn't look like there's any other nasty, goopy stuff inside the, the slip. So if anyone has done anything with these, uh, let me know. The other thing I might do is try a little embossing on this. But uh, yeah, it, uh, you know, that's uh, about a three and three quarter inch blade. And that went in there pretty well. Um, and I don't know. I think that would get lost in there. Yeah. So you, this is the larger one. You're going to definitely need a, a bigger knife in there. Um, this one uh, is probably too small for it itself. You could probably use something a little larger than that. Uh, any case, it's not a bad little sheath. Uh, I will have to give it a, uh, a try. Do a little bit of a, um, oiling to get it loosened up a bit. But uh, they're not nearly as stiff as... Uh, the way people have been uh, talking about them in the uh, videos. So, kind of like it. I, I think I will have to try and give it a, a shot and see uh, what I think of uh, leather slips. Um, let's get the big one back here. Uh, you see that it is Mora of Sweden, a, a batch number, whatever. I don't know. In any case, you can see uh, this thing is, well, let's back up. It's a big knife really big knife uh, which is why it came in such a big box and um, boom, 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 boom. see there oh careful now uh more made in sweden just more nice stainless i don't know what number this thing is uh it does have a drain hole in the bottom of the um of the uh, sheath, which is good, but basically, if you can see here, what you got is one big honking butcher knife, and uh, I think that's what I'm going to be basically doing. Is uh, I'm going to take that knife and I'm going to put in my, put it in my kitchen. I think it'll be a perfect knife for the kitchen, uh, and it's sharp as the Dickens. So, got a nice blade to it, and yeah, it just really big butcher knife and a very comfortable handle um a little big for the uh, screen right now and uh definitely 
you know, it goes in that sheath nice and tight. It's a nice plastic sheath, nothing fancy about it. But like I said, it does have a drain hole at the bottom. So if you were to take this out uh, fishing and stuff, you would be able to uh, not worry about everything getting wet. You see there? Probably not. There we go. See the nice little drain hole? It's always nice to have that in the bottom of a plastic sheath, that, uh, especially with your, your knife blades and everything. This feels like... Uh, it feels like rubber, but I think it's actually leather. Um, a, a pretty good quality leather, too. It's very nice and soft and supple. And uh, you see here the, the split there? That is actually so you can slip that over a button. So you can hook it on with a button, or you can just slip it over the entire belt. So that's pretty cool. And then I, I guess that is so you can just hang it uh, off the, uh, off the uh, workbench, you know, hook it into your... Uh, a uh, little nail or something on the workbench. So that's pretty cool. I uh, better put it back in the sheath so I don't slice my fingers off. Very much, a, <laughs> to me, it's just a big butcher knife, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, definitely going in the kitchen. Now this other one, I was kind of surprised by it when I saw what the blade was like. Uh, and it's a, a little smaller, so I can actually get it all on the screen. It's another uh, Mora knife, and I... Uh, Got the, it looks like cross paddles there and the little shield on top. I don't know, I guess that's the uh, the emblem for more knives. Uh, interesting shade of green. It's kind of a puke green or with a black handle. Again, with a nice soft grip. Again, with the um, drain hole on the bottom of the sheath. But the blade is really funky. It's like just a big old chisel. Um, sharp there, not as sharp there. Uh, and it is a flat, well, it is a chisel grind, so, and, um, at first I was thinking, what am I going to do with that? And then, uh, the next thing I thought is, man, have I ever had to do some, uh, scraping and stuff. And, um, uh, and that is what this is going to be good for because, uh, I'm thinking this could be used for, uh, removing the glaze around, uh, the windows so I can reglaze the, uh, uh, my windows in the house, it, it, it can also be used for uh, scraping off those stupid stickers on the car that I have to buy every year because I own a car, so therefore uh, the, the city and the state decides that I, I have to pay them money every year for the pleasure of owning a car. So um, I can scrape stickers off with that, and really though it's like a, a glazing tool as far as i'm concerned that's what it looks like to me i don't know what else it would be used for uh but for me uh yeah i'm going to be using it um for glazing windows and i've got <laughs> i've got some windows to take care of this summer so that'll come out real handy with that so i'm very happy with that and then i'll see what else i can do with that because uh well it's funky but i'm sure there's a uh, other uses for it than what I've just mentioned so far. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm thinking this was the uh, free gift they were giving at the time. Uh, I, I, I remember when, uh, when this was all being ordered, they were giving away a free gift if you made a purchase over a certain amount of money. And um, it was the SMKW Pocket Sharpener. Uh, and one side has steel and the other side has um, uh, ceramic rods. I've actually used these kind of uh, sharpeners on more than one occasion. And actually, you know, for a quick touch up on a blade, really not a bad idea. They're, they're not awful. I, I have used them and uh, I, I know there's a reason why people have them around. Um, you know, the coarse side is actually going to uh, help you with a very dull blade to get it uh, reasonably sharp, and then the fine side is to get the uh, the final edges on it. So you've got the ceramic rods on one side. Some of them usually have an arrow showing you which way to pull. This one does not, but that's not a big deal. Really doesn't matter too much. So got a pocket sharpener, and uh, then two more little knives in here. Uh, and I am going to save this one for last and go with this one first. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a wee little keychain. Um, come on, come on out. A little keychain uh, Congress knife. Oh, wow. 
So I got a, a couple little pieces of pocket jewelry here. Got a little ring for the uh, keychain there. So little, little, little coping blade. A wee little sheep foot blade. So we got a secondary sheep foot blade too, our second sheep foot blade. And finally, probably the pen blade. So everything you expect in a Congress except wee wee little. How big is this thing? Oh wow. It's actually, well, if you count the key ring, it's over two inches. If you don't count the key ring, it's under two inches. Oh man, good thing I didn't drop it on the floor. I might never find it. Yeah, looks like about one and seven eighths inches long. So a very small little knife, but, uh, and white smooth bone. So that's pretty cool. I will definitely put it in a drawer. Hopefully I will not lose it in the drawer. And finally, oh, I'm going to put that one back in the box. So I do not lose it. It's uh, small enough as it is. Um, finally, we got this one here. Uh, and this is uh, by uh, Steel Warrior, I believe. Yep, the Steel Warrior Field Dog Peanut. And I have actually been looking at getting one of these for a while. And I just always said, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I got one, and uh, it's got some interesting bone in there. Or No, I think this is probably a horn. Buffalo horn, that's what the BH would stand for. So we got a peanut in buffalo horn. Um, let's see here. I'm going to have to get that sticker off the back there. But we got a peanut blade there. And the reason I said I think I'm going to have to get the sticker off the back there is because I think the sticker is interfering with the other thing that was the reason I wanted to get these is the scissors. So I'm going to see how well these scissors stack up to, yeah, where are you going? Yeah, it is, <laughs> that's, that's how much the tolerance is. It is actually catching on the sticker on the back of the blade. So once I get that done, and you got the dog head shield on there. In any case, I will do a, a more comprehensive review of this knife, and I'm going to compare it to this wee peanut here, which is by Case, and I, I can't remember, I think they called it magenta, and you got the main blade there, and the scissors are up front on this one. And uh, I have actually reviewed this knife a long, long time ago, uh, comparing the scissors on this to a uh, Victorinox Classic SD, but now I'm going to do two uh, peanuts side by side and see uh, really compare the scissors and see just how well the scissors work. But first, this one uh, deserves to actually be cleaned up, have that sticker removed, and see how everything else works on it. So it's going to be a, a very good review of this knife uh, overall, and then I will also compare the scissors on this knife to the scissors on the case knife. All right, uh, enough of this. Let me clear this out of the way, and we will move on to another topic. Seems like a good time for an update on old ram horn here. And I wanted to show you something real quick. And that is, if you see there when I'm cutting, most of the damage being done to the blade here. Very hard to do this when I'm just sitting behind the camera. But as you, you can probably tell, the part of the blade that is actually um, getting most of the rub, because this portion is just falling forward. It's, it's, you know, it's moving away from the blade. It isn't actually rubbing against the blade so much. But the back of the blade here is where the wood is actually coming in contact. That's the part where the knife is actually rubbing. And uh, because and the reason it's happening that way is, well, I'm left-handed. So the back side of the blade is the part that is actually making contact with most areas when I am actually cutting. Even when I'm cutting through cardboard and paper 
or anything else. And so the front side of the blade, where in this case the reverse frosted etch is, um, is not catching nearly as much damage as what is going to be happening to the back side of the blade. So it seems to me that um, us folks with a who are left-handed, when it comes to reverse frosted etches and, and blade etches in general, um, that blade etch has a better chance of... Um, sticking around for a while than it does with right-handed people because uh, the only time that that blade is actually going to be catching and rubbing bad is when I'm cutting back towards myself and that's when the blade uh, etch is actually going to probably uh, incur a little bit more damage. Uh, what's also noticeable on this and you can feel it when you're touching it this knife has a bit of a uh, hollow grind going on. So even when you're cutting through stuff, hold on, um, let me grab a piece of cardboard here. So even when I'm cutting down into something like this, there's actually, you can't see it very well here, but there's actually a little bit of space uh, going on. So, um, the actual part where the blade edge is at is not really coming in contact with the cardboard. This edge up there is, and the very top of the knife is, but um, the um, the uh, cardboard is just kind of scooting past the actual blade edge. So because of the uh, hollow grind going on and everything else, uh, in some ways the blade edge is actually being protected. So um, I don't know how... Um, how much damage is actually going to happen to this blade etch? I, I've been cutting all sorts of stuff with it for for almost two and a half months now, and you can see it it's holding pretty well. Yeah, you still got those little marks over there, but like I mentioned, uh, those marks were there in the beginning. So I, I don't know. We'll see. Will it make it a whole year? Uh, my bet is it probably will. I, I thought for sure that these blade etches would rub off and like, a month or so but I think you really have to uh, um, work hard if you want to get rid of it really quick otherwise uh, uh, if you're just talking light duty and carrying it uh, every day your blade edge is going to last for a while I think we'll, we'll know more well this is this is just uh, my monthly update uh, which you'll see uh, again in April maybe I'll be proven wrong in April but so far uh, the blade edge on this knife is Hanging in there really well. I was, I'm was i really surprised by it. In any case, um, let's move on to uh, something else. We pause now for a brief word from our sponsor. Howdy, boys and girls. It's Gift the Show, and I'm back in town. You remember me as that radio sensation that rocked the nation back in 1980. Well, now I own the Volcano Club. And you got to drop by and see me in the Volcano Club. And this week only, we're giving away $5 ABAX. And that's sponsored by Knopcast with Tobias. And he gave me this little knife here from around my neck. In any case, he said anybody who comes by with a little knife around their neck can get an ABAX for $5. And that is a drink that is really a killer deal. So you got to drop by the Volcano Club. See me and say, I got my knife from Knife Cast with the Bike. And pick up that A back for five dollars. You can't go wrong. And remember, down here at the Volcano Club, Dick Dale and his Dale Tones isn't just a band. They're a way of life. Skip out. We now return to Knife Chats with Tobias, almost live. Um, okay, um, uh, Volcano Club. Uh that you know what? Before I move into uh, this box that I was going to show you, uh, I think we'll uh, show this first. The the uh, Jamaican Army Knife. I think that goes pretty well with something like the Volcano Club, maybe. I don't know. Um, uh, first, um, well, you got the Jamaican flag on there. And this is a, it's an interesting knife. Um, Got a light there too. And yeah, got a little bit of a light. Ooh, there we go. Mm, light. 
and it's got this uh, uh, pipe on the side here. Uh, thankfully, I have this because I can pull it out. I wonder how a person would get this out if they've actually been using this knife. Uh, that's a, a question. Um, as I'm not a person who indulges in this kind of stuff and never have, I don't exactly know what this pipe is, but uh, JamaicanArmy.com, they advertise. Um, I think they said it was for single something or another. I don't know. Someone out there might know what it is. I, I got this basically gifted to me as a gig, as a, as a gag, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, stainless, I believe it's, where is it made? I don't think it's made in Jamaica, but maybe it is, who knows? In any case, you got the uh, blade there, and then um, you got um, scissors, is this scissors? Oh, got a nice pair of scissors, I think. Yeah, got some scissors going on with it. Um, and then, oh, what's that? They said this was for picking up roaches or something. I don't know. It looks like a, a nice little pair of tweezers or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, and then uh, what else you got there? Um, okay, a cap lifter. Very much like a uh, one you'd find on a Victorinox knife, but uh, that wire stripper is definitely different. It's not nearly as defined. And then... Um, I don't know what that is. I don't see how that would work as a can opener. Um, I don't know. Anyway, if you guys out there know anything about the Jamaican Army and what they do with their knives and stuff, um, send me a, a note. I or leave a note in the comments down below. Um, any case, uh, I, I I'm really not familiar with the Jamaican Army, but. Uh, I got a Jamaican Army knife, so that was pretty cool. If, if you know more, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm kind of kind of lost on that. Let's move on to the big box here on the table. Another big box. This was a uh, purchase I made of a knife lot on eBay. I usually don't do that, but there were a couple knives in there that looked pretty interesting to me. And uh, a couple thoughts that I had on what they were. And so I said, I'm going to go ahead and take a gamble and, and, and make a bid on that. And, uh, well, I got it for a decent enough price because uh, one of the tools in here more than uh, covers what I paid for it on eBay. Uh, let's crack it open and, uh, well, turn it up. And there we have it all. That's everything that was in the box. I guess I could have surprised you one at a time. But there were a couple knives in here that I was really interested in grabbing, so I went ahead and grabbed it. And actually, only one knife in this entire box was uh, was a bummer. So let's get that one out of the way right away, and that's this one here, the Toro uh, Virginia Turf and Irrigation. Now, it wasn't so much that it had... Um, um, uh, advertising all over it it's another problem with the knife if you notice there the scissors seem to be sticking up and I wasn't sure why that was happening um, but when you open it up you also feel yeah there's absolutely no snap in that blade and there is snap in this blade and if you look down there it looks can we get it to focus there you, can, you can't see it on that side, but you can definitely see it over here. One of the springs is broken. Not both of them, just one of them. The one working the main blade is broken. And because of that, the scissors will not go all the way down. And uh, I wonder why that happened or how that happened, but... It does show you even the springs on a Victorinox Swiss Army knife can break. So this knife is pretty much a, a piece of junk. And it's not going to go in the giveaway or anything. But what I figured I would do is I will still save it for parts because uh, I can still use the key ring. I can still use the tweezers as replacements. And uh, I've got a spring here for the uh, scissors 
which uh, I can pop out also. So I'm going to strip this thing down for parts and uh, and go for it that way. Uh, in any case, so it's not a total waste, but uh, definitely a bad uh, uh, 58 millimeter classic. And if you notice, we got what one, two, three. Four knives that look like 58 millimeter classics, but uh, they're not all classic SDs, and that's the cool thing about it. Matter of fact, two of these are not a classic SD at all because they are just one layer knives instead of two layer knives. And somebody is calling. Hello, hello. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Do you want to say hi? Huh? Huh? You know, you're really... Uh, you should go take a nap. You were napping nicely. Come on. Hop down. Well, hop down. I have to do this. Well, I don't care. I was right in the middle of talking about... No one wants to see that. No one wants to see that. Come on. No. Come on. Let's get down. Say hi to everybody and let's get down. You want to lay in my lap while I try and uh, video, okay? Come on. Come on. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Thank you. All right. Where was I? Got to adjust my camera and everything now. We now return to our regular programming already in progress. I probably have enough footage of her interrupting me to actually put together an entire video. In any case, um, these are the four 58mm uh, knives I have. And if you notice, one of them is definitely different than the others. Like I said, two of them are one layer knives. These are the one layer knives. But one of them also does not have the toothpick or tweezers on it. Making this is the uh, thinnest Celador uh, handled... Um, Victorinox knife in their lineup, and this is known as the Princess. Um, and you've got a main blade on it, you know, the little pin blade, and then you have a secondary nail file on the other side. Um, and the nail file on the Princess does not have a screwdriver tip; it has a a um, nail cleaner tip, and that's really what makes this a Princess. This is actually the second Princess that I have, so this one. I'll probably compare the two of them and uh, keep one and, and then put the other one in the giveaway box. So I'll give it away to somebody. I don't really need two of them, but I do want an example of the princess. And then the other uh, one layer knife I got here is the uh, Escort. And notice this one does have toothpick and tweezers. And uh, you got a main blade with it. And then on the other side, you just have the uh, screwdriver tipped uh, nail file. Uh, and that's your Escort. This is actually the second Escort I have. But the other Escort I have, I think, is known as the Escort 2. And it is slightly different. Now, this is what I believe is the Escort 2. Notice it still has the same... Uh, um, nail file with the screwdriver tip but the blade on this one is known as the emergency blade which is a long well a very small worn clip blade if you notice there there's the worn clip blade and so that's basically the difference between the escort and the escort 2. Um, this blade is also found on the uh, physician knife and when it's on the physician knife, the physician knife uh, will have these two blades on it. So it will replace the uh, the uh, the nail file with uh, the pin blade. Or it replaces the nail file with the emergency blade or the worn clip blade. So still looking for a physician. I don't have one of those yet. But I do have uh, both the Escort and the Escort 2 now. And like I said, I've got an extra princess, and one of them will end up going into the giveaway box. And the other two knives down here are basically your uh, classics or a classic SD. Um, I don't know. Let's see. This one, uh, I believe this is a classic SD. Yeah, scissors, uh, main blade, 
um, and nail file with the screwdriver tip. The SD stands for screwdriver, uh, and th so this is your classic SD screwdriver tip. And then this one, this one is actually a classic. Um, uh, so this one has the nail cleaner tip on it, which you do not see as often these days. Um, obviously, before they put the screwdriver tip on it, um, almost all of them had, well, all of them did have a, um, a, a nail cleaner tip like this. Uh, today, the only ones you see with the uh, nail cleaner tip in the classic SD lineup is, or the classic lineup, is the ones with the Edelweiss scales. So this is the um, Edelweiss, uh, the knives in the Edelweiss scales. You had a uh, a green, a blue, a purple, a red, and a pink. I think the only one still available these days is the red. I might be wrong there. The Sometimes the other ones will show back up occasionally, but these were the uh, five colors in the uh, Edelweiss knives. And like I mentioned, all of them have uh, just your regular... Um, um, nail file cleaner tip instead of the uh, screwdriver tip uh, on the Edelweiss knives. Um, believe it or not, um, I do not have a whole lot of uh, red classic knives. Um, as a matter of fact, I, this is the only one I have right now with this uh, style of nail file. I have one other one with a nail file like that but it's the older nail file. Um, if you notice there, this one has the lines running through it. I've got to try and clean it a little bit better. And uh, it also has the, uh, um, I think this is the aluminum tipped um, on tweezers. So I've got that one. And then uh, among the Red Classic SDs, I've got this one here. That's it, and I believe, yeah, this is the only one that's a you know, classic SD. So th those are the only three um, standard red classic SDs I have. I've got well over uh, 60 classic SDs, but these are the only three I have in red. So uh, I don't know what that says, but uh, it does say that there's quite a bit of variety in the classic SD lineup. Now, I do also have one with a nylon handle, and obviously there's the red Alox one I have, and a silver Alox, and then the other one in red Celador. But this is not your standard 58mm uh, uh, Classic SD, even though it looks very much like a standard... Uh, where is this? Oh, that's the scissors. Yeah, it looks like a Classic SD at first sight until you open the blade up and you see on there if you can see it see that Charles Elsener so the blade is signed uh, for Charles Elsener uh, so I don't really consider that your uh, standard classic SD um, and that's also a blade edge I'm kind of happy with in any case let's move on to what's left in the box as we're working our way up in size, let's go with the 274 millimeters. Um, this is the executive. It's kind of like the ambassador, but it's got more tools on it. I already have an executive. I got a black executive. Uh, this is one in red and it's obviously used for advertising. And what you have on it is a very long nail file with a uh, uh, cuticle tip or file cleaner tip, whatever you want to call it other side you got a pair of scissors um, a little bit bigger than the ones you have on the, the 58 millimeter ones but uh, smaller than what you find on 91 millimeter ones um, these are the scissors that they should go around and stick into the um, into the 84 millimeter frame so that people could start having uh, the 84 millimeter knives with scissors again and then on the other side you've got this uh, funky scraper blade and then, uh, which I know a lot of people like, I think is for, um, for peeling oranges and stuff. Um, but it's also got a nice scraper edge right there. Um, 
so you could do some zesting with it or something, I guess. And then a fairly long pen blade. And that's the executive. You also got your tweezers and your toothpick on the other side. And yeah, typically what I do is I go ahead and switch out the, 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 the toothpicks. I've got plenty of toothpicks here. I just go ahead and order them off of a Swiss knife store. I get extra toothpicks so I can swap them out when, uh, when I buy these um, um, older Swiss Army knives who wants to use somebody else's toothpick. In any case, uh, I like I said, I have a one in black. There's my executive in black. This is uh, your basic ambassador. That's the uh, uh, one layer version of the uh, of the executive. This is two layers. This is one layer, and this has basically the same tools that you find on a uh, on a 58 millimeter knife. You got the scissors, the uh, pin blade, and then a um, a nail file. The nail file is actually right off of the 58 millimeter knife. So. But you got two larger blades on there. So the ambassadors are the 74 millimeter knives are, are knives that are overlooked in the uh, in the Swiss Army knife collector lineup, uh, and they really uh, need to have a little bit more love given to them. Uh, I know there are some avid fans of them. I'm just kind of in the middle with them. Um, they're to me they're a little bit too big for the uh, the uh, the keychain, but at the same time. Uh, at 74 millimeters, they're just under three inches, which is a good size uh, uh, knife for the uh, your fifth pocket or just uh, for everyday carry in general. Uh, as for this one, um, I feel this is kind of all like pad stamped on it right on top of there. So what I plan on doing is um, is um, sanding this off and polishing up the scales and uh seeing how it comes out and uh and then once that happens i will decide if it's going to uh enter my collection or enter the giveaway box so this might be something that shows up in the giveaway box or i might be keeping it let's move on to the 91 millimeters notice i'm saving the big guy for last and this is really the whole reason i uh bought the box and i actually got this box for what I would have paid for this uh, on its own, uh, even in the used condition. Now I've got uh, plenty of these, so uh, I this will most likely end up in the uh, the giveaway box. I don't know for sure because of the uh, Holfritz down there, because I do not have a climber um, that says Holfritz on it, but that's basically what this is. It's uh, the Victorinox climber. Um, you know, it's a climber because it has a uh, a corkscrew, and this is an older one. You see the, uh, is it? yeah, it's a grooved corkscrew, and there is no um, uh, parcel hook or universal hook or whatever they call it now uh, in the middle. And also, you've got the, uh, the screwdriver for the uh, scissors, but the scissors are nice and tight. And all the blades work really well for it, so um, really good knife. Um, and climbers are a really good pattern, too. I know a lot of people don't uh, care for it too much. Um, depending on if I can get rid of where somebody wrote something on there, it looks like their name or something, or F-A-I-R, oh, F-A-I-R. If I can get that off with some alcohol and clean this up, then uh, then maybe I will keep this. You got to be very careful with alcohol uh, on the cellador scales. It can damage them. But uh, I'm going to see if I can clean that up. And if I can, then I will keep it for the collection because of the Hofred stamp until I can find a better one. Because uh, the knife is actually in really good shape. Not too old because you can see that it has the half stop going on. Uh, so probably from the... Uh, uh, around 83, 84, somewhere around there. Uh, so that's the Hofritz Climber. And then down here is a modern era, as you can tell from the uh, the parcel hook. Um, and it's got Ronald Griffith on the backside there. But it is a Huntsman. And uh, what I might be doing with this one is, and this is also in really good shape, really good shape nothing at all wrong with this and if your name is ronald griffith 
that this knife is for you, but uh, it's going to be going to somebody else instead, most likely. So this one is probably going to go into what I've been calling a box of junk, but I might also end up uh, uh, sending off Ronald Griffith's name first and, uh, and then putting it into the junk box. Uh, because I've got about four Huntsman's already, and I really don't need this one. It was just one of the knives that was in the box, and I said, what the heck? You know, got two really good knives for giveaway, uh, maybe more because of, I, I thought there was uh, quite a few uh, 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 Swiss Army knife, uh, little 58 millimeter classics, but uh, these were the only two that uh, are for sure probably going in the giveaway. Well, this one, possibly not, but most likely will. But this is the big boy that I actually uh, decided to grab. Uh, this is the whole reason I went for it. Because I did not have a Swiss tool. And I wanted to check it out. And uh, I tell you what. I'm pretty impressed with the, the Swiss tool. I'm kind of happy with it. This is um, the not the first year of production. But the second year production version of the Swiss tool. And I will be talking more about this one in the future. Um, one of the things I noticed right away when I got it, though, is I opened up one of the blades. I, this is, I was doing this kind of thing with the blades, just open them halfway and everything. And then uh, one of the blades, uh, it's like, I got the uh, big blade out here, and I opened it. It's like, wow. And I went like that, and it's like, oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. It feels good in the hand, too. And then uh, I'm like... What the heck? How do you close this thing? Because I never had it, never read the instructions or anything. And then I'm like trying to twist this, roll this to see if that's how you unlock the blade or, or whatever. And then uh, finally I kind of noticed, if you notice very carefully there, you can see how there's some marks there. And then it's like, oh, you slide that back and it closes. And it's like, okay, that's cool. And then... Uh, I went and did this. It's like, holy crap, that's in the middle. I don't know how they do it, but every blade locks with those things. And you can slide it from either side, as you see there. I'm pulling on the other side. So that slide lock goes all the way across there, and it will lock every blade open that you open. So that was pretty cool to find out. Um, and, uh, you know, you got a nice size uh pliers and wire cutter but like i said i'll be talking more about the uh the swiss tool in the future I'll give you a little bit of information about what year this was and and all the tools that are on it and everything um with that said let's move away from the the other big box of joy and move on to just some little fun stuff that i got around and you know we'll talk about that i Forgot, did I mention this one or not? This is the uh, the money clip. I, there was also a money clip in the box. This is uh, also a 74 millimeter knife. And you got the uh, scissors on one side and then, you know, the uh, blade. And uh, it's basically like an ambassador, but it's got a, a smooth A-lock scales. And, uh, well, it's a money clip. Um, I'll be talking about this one also. This is one that, uh, this is the other knife that was in that box that I saw that's like, you know what, I've been thinking about a money clip. Why not go ahead and grab that? So these were the, the two knives that really I was after in the entire box. But there are a couple other ones that I ended up getting and saying, wow, that's pretty cool too. So um, usually I don't go for those uh, lot uh, buying lots because uh, usually it's a bad deal. But this one I got for a really good deal. So it was worth doing. So since then I've been looking at other lots and... Uh, so a lot of those knives in the lot boxes are probably going to end up going into uh, the giveaway, but there'll always be one or two that I'm going to want to keep. So if I get a lot box uh, in April, you'll see more knives from a lot box, but otherwise we'll go in a different direction. But now let's move on to other things. So I've been uh, ragging on Rough Riders recently, but uh, I thought I'd try and turn that around a little bit and uh, break out a couple older ones that I got here. Uh, and this one is in the Once in a Blue Moon series. Uh, well, this is, yeah, probably around 2011, 2012, somewhere around there that this came out. This particular one is uh, is the Sal Belly. 
a lot of people love Sal Belly's, uh, the Sal Belly Stockman. And there you have it. Um, and I bought it because it is the Sal Belly. Uh, yeah, and you will see it does have a reverse frosted blade etch on it. But I bought it because of that moon shield there, the uh, crescent moon shield. And you got otherwise the nickel silver bolsters and everything. And uh, well, you got a blade etch that matches the box there. So you see there, once in a blue moon. So it's a pretty cool uh, blade etch going on. And like I said, it is a sow belly. Um, I've got quite a few uh, Rough Rider sow bellies. These are the older ones, so there is no half stop going on. But it's still a pretty good knife. Uh, I Their sow bellies are, I don't care uh, what you say, they're really good. Regardless if they're new, old, or whatever. Yes, there is a little bit of blade rub on this sow belly. You might have even heard it. Well, I can feel it. Um, the uh, spade blade definitely does rub against the uh, sheep foot blade, and you can see the mark right there. Uh, not a big deal to me. Um, like I said, I got several sow bellies. That's the uh, the uh, once in a blue moon. Let me show you a couple other uh, Rough Rider sow bellies I have. I've shown this one before. It's in the uh, Moonshiner series. And it also has that crescent moon shield. And this one has the corn cob jig uh, handle on it. And this time the uh, the crescent moon says moonshiner on it. And this one also has a blade etch. Uh, it's got the moonshiner on the uh, blade etch. I believe this one was done by Brian Wilhoyt. I also think the Once in a Blue Moon was done by Brian Wilhoyt. I'm not 100% sure of that, though. Um, but there's two of them. And that's not going to work. Let's turn the box that way. Uh, and let's get a couple other of my Rough Rider sow bellies. So naturally, I have one in uh, white smooth bone. And uh, I have one in the uh, tortoiseshell handles as well. You know, those are knives that I collect all the... I'm trying to get every Rough Rider tortoiseshell knife there is. And I'm trying to get every Rough Rider white smooth bone knife there is. So... It's obvious that I would have uh, sow bellies in there. Um, I was at one time trying to get every sow belly they had, but uh, I I don't know. I, I lost interest in it at some point. I, I guess it's you can only collect so many knives, but got those uh, two there and then uh, those, which are pretty cool. And obviously the saw cut bone. Um, I like the saw cut bone series. A lot of people, when they're looking at the saw cut bone series, uh, they see these uh, bolsters and they don't like the bolsters on it. And so they don't care for this uh, knife, these knives. But I actually like the bolsters on here too. Um, it's uh, You only find it in a couple Rough Rider series, these, uh, these style of bolsters. Uh, you see them in some of the hot pink handles. And uh, in the original saw cut bone handle knives, you had them too, especially the ones with the uh, round horseshoe shield. So, uh, and I think the uh, the tortoiseshell. I'm sorry, the saw cut bone and these are just absolutely stunning. Um, and finally, the last one I have is uh, in the Acorn series or the uh, Outdoorsman series. So, that's. Um, I actually had a couple other ones, and I actually gave them away. I think I gave away the one that was in the Rifleman series. Somebody needed it, and uh, uh, and like a fool, I gave it to them. But anyway, there's my uh, Rough Rider sow bellies. Now, one of the reasons I brought these all out is because of the uh, the Blue Moon series here, and uh, which I really liked uh, when it first came out. I only bought two knives in the... Uh, uh, once in a Blue Moon series. And the other one I picked up was uh, actually the second um, five inch lockback that I ever had. And it's right here, this one here. Um, and I actually got to hand pick this one out because I bought it at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So I was actually looking at the bone and uh, I was looking at how it was not completely blue. And I just loved the way uh, the coloration was on there, the fact that it wasn't a solid blue. And uh, got the shield there, and uh, I just said, man, I like that one. And that's really what sold me on it. I was not a big fan of the 5-inch lockback. I, I think I've made that clear, and a lot of people 
uh, make fun of me about it because of the uh, Buck 110. But anyway, I saw this one. I was like, man, I got to get that one because of the way the bone looked. And uh, yes, it, back in the days when I actually didn't mind the reverse frosted blade etches either. Someday I'll get back into uh, not minding it too much. But you see the nice blade etch going on. And, and because of how big this knife was, you got a really big uh, blade etch going with it. So, uh, And it was all right with me because I was figuring this knife was just going to be more of a display piece anyway. But I really uh, need to consider getting another Rough Rider uh, five inch lock back because the way they make the handle it really feels good in the hand uh, I, I like the way uh, you've got that little bit of uh, you know it's kind of like a copperhead style bolster going and it just feels really good in the hand and you can also get your finger up there if you wanted to uh, get it even up closer um, any case uh, yeah I probably will eventually one of these days uh, get around to doing a uh, video on a another well I'll probably end up I, I need to do a video on all of my um, five inch lockbacks and give it a little bit of a history about the pattern uh, I am one of those people who believes that it is definitely uh, a buck one the buck 110 does get the credit for it as far as I'm concerned not uh, the Schrade LB7 I know they came out about the same time but uh I think the Buck 110 is the, the knife that really made it popular and and really got the 5-inch uh, lock back going. I'll, I'll have to do a video on that real soon um, and show off the uh, the number of 5-inch lockbacks I have for a pattern that I don't actually collect. I, I must have probably uh, somewhere between 7 and 10 of these things. In any case, uh, let's move away from Rough Rider and uh, all these sow bellies and go to uh, a little fish knife that I've been meaning to talk about for a while and just haven't gotten around to doing. And now for this brief public service announcement. For the last year, we've all been working very hard to strive and stay safe. We all know about our protective mask. We also know about the shortage of toilet paper, so make sure you keep an extra roll of toilet paper with you just in case. And as always, nothing helps to get you through those hard times as some kind of uh, alcohol-based antiseptic. But now as we transition into normalcy, you may find yourself in needs of using a public toilet. And if you remember, public toilets are always not the most sanitary place. So you may want to consider picking up a public toilet survival kit, such as this one by Archie McPhee. In the kit, you'll find yourself two antiseptic wipes, one pair of disposable gloves, one toilet seat cover, and the instructions are printed right there on the back. So there you have it. Consider a public toilet survival kit as we return to normalcy. In the meantime, don't forget, keep that six feet of distance and wear your mask so that we can get out there and use a public toilet survival kit. Thank you. This public service announcement was brought to you by the good folks at the American Council for Public Toilets of America. Okay, so I um, thought I'd show a couple fish knives I got. Uh, and if you look at them, you can see, wow, those kind of look like a Duke Duke, or they also look like those uh, uh, Ottermesser Black Cat, uh, what is it, K55K Black Cat knives, in that they basically have a handle that is made out of a piece of uh, metal rolled around a spring and a blade, and then it's pinned together. These are both uh, locking blades. There's a lock up there on the front, and they both have a some kind of a hole in the back for a key ring or something. And this one, these were also made a long time ago by, um, they'd say George Schrade on them, or G-E-O, whatever his middle initial was, Schrade. Um, and they were also known as a fishing and hunting knife or a hunting and fishing knife. Uh, this one, the Scotch line number K-199, is the fishing and hunting knife. And you notice you have the, uh, it looks like a marlin or something, uh, or a swordfish or something, jumping out of the water down by the uh, 
the pommel end of the knife and then at the top end you have a moose up by the uh, front pivot and uh, you know fishing and hunting knife and this one is uh, this one's a great name Cousin Willie's uh, stainless steel hunting and fishing knife and now you see the the moose at the uh, the the bottom of the knife and the jumping fish near the top uh, pivot of the knife. Uh, otherwise, the knives are pretty much exactly the same. Both of them were also made in Japan. Um, the ones that were made by Schrade uh, much earlier were made in the United States, I believe. See there, it's uh, C1, stainless steel. This is, I guess, a number 1053 out of Japan. And it, it's got a really nice lock going on with it. Oh, oh. Oh, you gotta slide the lock forward and then it locks. So it isn't automatic that it locks. You have to actually slide the lock forward and it'll lock the blade in place. And otherwise, it's a nice thin handled knife, not actually the most comfortable. And you got the, uh, the um, scaler on the top. And I guess, yeah, you pull it back, it closes. Got a really strong half stop going. And I suppose you could do, like I've said with other knives, with the, uh, with the uh, other uh, uh, fish knives that have the scaler on the top, it's actually better just to scale it like so, with the blades closed, uh, rather than having the blade out. That way you'll reduce the chance of getting a bunch of blade wobble on it. But uh, that's the Cousin Willie, and here's the Scotch line. You can also lock it closed, so it won't come open on you. So the lock works both ways. This one obviously has been used a little bit more and abused a little bit, but still a pretty cool knife, I think. Um, and this one, also stainless steel Japan, does it have a number on it? No, no number on the back side, but it did say Oh yeah, two lock, push here. So, lock it closed, and it's safe. Lock it open, and it's safe. Um, and like I said, there were also earlier ones made by Schrade, and they would say Schrade on there, and still say hunting and fishing knife, but they're really pretty much just like your uh, typical Duke Duke or that uh, black cat knife that uh, uh, Otto Messer makes these days. Um, Kind of cool. You, you still see them. They're still out there. You run across them once in a while. Um, let me show you a, a couple other uh, interesting fish knives. And then I'm going to show you two last knives after I show you a couple of fish knives. And then I think I'm going to call it a day. Okay, I don't know if I've ever shown this one before. It is a uh, marble safety folder. And it's really an interesting knife. And uh well, Marbles uh, made quite a few interesting knives uh, back when they were in Gladstone, Michigan and everything. Um, and several of those patterns have since been remade uh, in China. Now, this particular one, um, you can see it's got a brass-like handle. I believe it's brass. Uh, there's a blade inside here. In any case, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, I just wanted to go a little bit of a history about this knife. Uh, it's been around for a long, long time. I, I think it dates from before World War II uh, that they came out with the uh, safety folder like this. Um, but in any case, this one, um, from what I understand, um, marbles uh, or Smoky Mountain Knife Works or someone... Uh, uh, got a bunch of uh, parts for Marvel's knives that were in Glad from the Gladstone factory when it closed. And uh, these were um, sold through Knives Live TV. And uh, they came with a little certificate of authenticity. I might have that certificate somewhere. I don't know. Um, and uh, it's basically a... They took the parts from the factory... From the Marbles factory and from Gladstone, Michigan, and had these knives produced for them in their factory in China. So they're, they're, the parts are USA made, the knife was assembled in China, and then came back here. 
Um, and then they had a certificate with it, which was nothing more than like a business card that gave some kind of thing saying certificate of authenticity and uh, SMKW saying, yeah, uh, we're, we're certifying that this was made from parts from the old Marvels factory. And uh, this is the way it opens up. You see there, you can start seeing the blade there and then you pull it on out. Why it's got a thumb nick, I don't know, or nail nick, I don't know. Open it all the way up and you close it and you basically got a fixed blade because there's no way it can close because your hand is on there and uh, it's nice and tight. Got the uh, fish scale on the back side here. Um, and nowhere on this knife does it say Gladstone, Michigan or anything uh, because of the blade. Uh, the blade was not stamped yet um, as Gladstone. And the only place where it says marbles is right there on the handle. Uh, so, is it really made from parts from Gladstone, Michigan? I'm just going to take uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works' uh, word for it and say yes, it is. Um, I tell you what, it really doesn't matter. Even finding ones that are stamped China are really hard to uh, find right now uh, because they just don't seem to be making them anymore. But uh, to me, it's just a really interesting fidgety knife. Uh, and so I don't know if I'd consider it an oddball, but it was definitely um, an idea that Marvels came up with that is really pretty cool. The uh, the Marvels safety folder. And um, I said I was going to show two fish knives, so let me show you the other one here. And that is um, a bait knife. One of uh, uh, the earlier bait knives that I got. And this one is out of South Bend. South Bend is a tackle company. And you see there, honed high carbon stainless steel uh, feather edge. Got a nice little jumping fish on there. That's the uh, the whole thing that comes with it. You notice there, Japan, and right there, Japan. Uh, and this is uh, an early South Bend bait knife. And um, this is one of those knives that when I looked at it, it's like, yeah, this is this almost confirms my thought that basically the um, your bait knives that you have today, uh, they are nothing more than a kitchen knife that has basically had a fish scaler added to the top. So it's usually either like a paring knife or a steak knife that has been slightly modified. And then they have since um, uh, changed quite a bit from this style of knife. But, uh, well, hold on just a sec. So here's my Larry the Cabled Guy Get Her Done Steak Knife. You see that? And then you see the South Bend uh, bait knife. And you can definitely see the family resemblance between your basic steak knife and this South Bend knife. And then this is what your modern bait knife looks like. You got a, well now it's a, not a, a fish scaler, but actually a, a bone saw and a line cutter. But, really, is it that much different? And actually, yeah, that is definitely a scale or not a bone cutter. But you can see. So that's kind of the evolution of the, uh, the bait knife. Another video I've been working on that I've been trying to figure out, uh, still looking for information about it, but how did the bait knife uh, evolve and, and come about to what we see today as a bait knife. I've mentioned these before, so I'm definitely interested in them. In any case, uh, let's move on to the last couple knives here, and those are going to be, uh, and then we'll be at the end of the show. Uh, and it's a, another Rough Rider knife. Uh, it's in a red box, uh, which usually means, if you see a red box, it usually means that it is a modern folder type of uh, Rough Rider. I've seen a couple knives that are not uh, modern folders in the red box, but typically that's what it is. And you notice it's a little older because it's still with an eye. And uh, I bought it on a whim. I saw it on uh, eBay and it's like, wait a minute, I just saw that knife uh, uh, in my in my 
feed also, but it wasn't by Rough Rider, it was by Boker. I mean, it was literally the exact same knife uh, in the by Boker Magnum. And uh, so I went over and uh, to the uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works website, and the knife there was listed at $8, whereas the Boker Magnum version of it was listed for $24.95 or something like that. I ended up getting it off of eBay because it was out of stock at uh, at uh, SMKW, and the one on uh, eBay was like um, 11 or $12, so it wouldn't have been much more with uh, postage and everything. Um, and it's just uh, kind of a funky knife, definitely uh, worthy of, uh, of the title of gas station knife, but it's really not a bad knife. Um, it's got uh, dual thumb studs. It's a liner lock, which is one of the reasons I decided I would just go ahead and get it. It's got a reversible or a removable uh, pocket clip, uh, tip down carry. So I will probably remove it if I plan on keeping it, or this might end up in the uh, in the junk box. I don't know uh, my box of giveaway knives, but I just saw it and I was like, that's kind of interesting. I don't know why, but it was just kind of interesting. And uh, it's a flipper, and it flips nice, and it's got a nice blade shape. I kind of liked it. I like the um, the way this is a kind of a shiny uh, satin finish, and then this is a black finish. And I think it was the exact same finish on the uh, on the Boker knife. Same three holes and everything else. It's like exact same knife, but a Boker Magnum. Same camouflage going on it too. And that was a uh, uh, one of the things that uh made me think, do I really want to buy it? Because, um, surprisingly, I, I, I just noticed, uh, when I, after I bought this, I was like, how many camouflage knives do I have? I mean, I do have the, uh, the green skull camouflage knife, but, uh, I realized that I don't have a lot of, uh, camouflage knives. Uh, I don't even have a, a Victorinox knife in, uh, with camouflage handles yet. And I don't know if I'm going to get one. But this one, uh, you know, it's, it works pretty good. It flips open really well. It's uh, 440 uh, steel. And uh, I don't know, it's just kind of funky. And uh, like I said, definitely gas station worthy, but uh, still a pretty cool knife. And like I mentioned, I had one other camouflage knife. And I thought, well, as long as I'm showing this camouflage knife, let's break out the Turtle Man again. And uh, it's got a little turtle on the end here, which is pretty cool. And then, and I bought this one because of, uh, well, the little turtle, but I actually did buy this one because of the camouflage. Uh, this is the turtle camouflage, and I actually like that. And I always thought, man, um, that actually looks like an effective camouflage pattern. You know, the, the, the turtle man camouflage pattern. It's a take on the uh, woodland pattern. And so it's like, hmm, that's kind of cool. And so that's why I bought it. Um, and uh, this one also was like eight bucks, uh, 440 steel and big old blade. Uh, what do they call that? A harpoon blade or something? Uh, this one has only a uh, right thumb stud, which really doesn't bother me because it's got a really good flipper action going on. Obviously, another knife worthy of the gas station, but uh, also well made. This one's got the faintest wobble in it. I think that's because I loosened it a bit so that the blade would flip faster. Yeah, because you want your blade to flip fast. But uh, yeah, that's it for my uh, camouflage knives, unless uh, you include my favorite gas station knife of all time uh, and my favorite Rough Rider flipper knife of all time uh, in uh, the world of uh, gas station knives, but I don't consider this one gas station worthy. This one is too good for the gas station. My tie-dye. My feeling groovy with tie-dye. Yeah. Uh, Skip the show saw this when he was, uh, when I gave him the, uh, the little uh, green knife. It's like, nope, you can't have it, Skip. This one's mine. I'm keeping this one. You go get your own uh, feeling groovy with tie-dye. This one's too cool for you, Skip.
And so I gave him the little zombie green neck knife instead. Uh, yeah, see what happens when you uh, have to go and pick up a sponsor for the show. Anyway, I'll let you go now, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. And that brings us to the conclusion of another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias Almost Live. If you liked what you saw, give us that thumbs up and leave us a comment. We always like to hear from you here at Knife Chats with Tobias. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias is up and running. But thanks again, and we'll see you soon.